soon as you can get back in. Indeed. Um, if you are watching in chat, um, this is the site of uh, Professor Jason Hughes's internet connection. It has all gone horribly wrong. It was lovely a scant few seconds ago, and then for some reason, his internet's gone. Or mine has, and I don't think it's mine. Um, so we're going to keep on trying and get him back in. However, in the meantime, I am joined tonight by two gorgeous ladies, gorgeous intelligent ladies. I'm trying not to be sexist tonight. In the uh, in the red corner. Now I'll keep trying, Jason. We have um, Sarah Jakes Twigglet on on Twitter. If you're a Twitterizer, how are you doing, Sarah? Oh, I'm good, thank you. Good, good. That's what we like to hear. Mm. I'm trying to see if there's any typing going on, and I can't. Don't you love it when the tech lets you down? And and in in the, the mega cat house tonight, we have the effervescent loveliness and the bountiful beauty deliciousness that is the one and only Sav. How are you doing, Sav? I'm absolutely fine, dear. How's yourself? Well, I'd be a lot better if I could get this connection to work. Hi. We'll keep trying. It was absolutely fine. It was absolutely fine until we put the bug on, as anybody that was watching the pre-show will attest, and then all of a sudden it just went horribly wrong. It did say there was a lot of rain down there. There's not that much, <laughs> I would hope. Um, it, 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 the idea is that we've got Professor Jason Hughes with us tonight. Now, those of you that are um, based in the Leicester area and those of you that are on Twitter, and if you're not, you should be. I keep saying that, don't I? But yes, um, you will have seen the following, he said, in the Leicester Mercury that went up today which says he seeks face tight restrictions. And a Leicester professor has argued that e-cigarettes will soon face tight restrictions in Europe, even though there is little conclusive evidence of any physical danger to health. That's what that says. And we're still having trouble getting that particular professor in. But we're going to keep on trying while the titles are on. Um, I love it when a plan comes together. I'm just going to say for the moment, hello, good evening and welcome to VT Talk. I'm going to try Jason again. the titles and you'll hear from that beep that uh, I'm still trying to dial Professor Jason Hughes up um, to come in and, and join us we're gonna have to keep on going at this uh, which is an interesting one I was next hello is that working hello Jason hey hello. David how you doing uh, I'm doing really well but you're all upside down now hang on a sec if you um, if you turn it landscape hang on this is my backup Ah. My iPhone. So we're actually on iPhone now. There you go. That's it. It's working. It's bang on. That's great. Is that okay? Yeah, that is absolutely fine. We have sorted it. Um, if, if it's possible, can we switch to the other device? Because um, I can't. I can barely hear you on this for some reason. The volume's not loud enough. Okay. Let's give it another go. I'll end the call and call you back. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. This is what happens. This is, you are seeing technology at its best. Interesting though that an iPhone worked. <laughs> Hello, Hello sir. And we're back. That's better. Can you hear better now? Yeah, much better. What happened? It just went dead. You were counting down. <laughs> it just went dead. Just the, the call dropped. Wow. Well, all looks to be okay now. So right, let's get at it. Let's 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 go to this now. I've just brought in the point that um, Jason is this Leicester professor that has argued that e-cigarettes will soon face tight restrictions in Europe, even though there is little conclusive evidence of any physical danger to health. That's him, Professor Jason Hughes of the University of Leicester said recent legislation, in particular the Tobacco Products Directive, 
passed by the European Parliament in February was largely based on social concerns about the use of e-cigarettes. And I'm going to scroll right the way to the bottom where it says that an earlier version of this story incorrectly said that Professor Hughes had himself claimed that e-cigarettes could be a gateway to harder drugs. This is not his view, and this updated version of the story makes clear that the point he is making is that governments are likely to use such arguments in order to justify restrictions on the marketing and content of e-cigarettes. Do you want to pick the story up from the start, Jason, and fill people in on, on what went on? Yeah, sure. I mean, stop me if I go on too long. Uh, I, I was um, I was away from work on Monday. I had a bit of a family day, and um, uh, I came in on Tuesday, and I had this kind of avalanche of emails and uh, a bit of a Twitter storm um, with people saying, "Did you really write this? What what is this?" Um, yeah, the original headline was "Less the Professor Says E-Cigarettes Are a Gateway to Hard Drugs." Um, of course, when I when I saw that, my blood ran cold. And then the the first few comments that came up were, uh, um, you know, um, I think Professor Hughes has got a new book coming out because there won't be a shred of evidence to support this. And I thought, well, I've, of course, this is not what I've said. Um, and it turns out when I looked through my emails, um, there had been some from the Leicester Mercury. Uh, a chap there, a reporter there, was trying to get hold of me. I'd been away. I did give him my telephone number late on Monday night. And he responded and said, so, okay, I've got everything I need from the press. And I think, you know, to, to be fair in this case, um, there's no sort of big conspiracy. Um, I think what happened was he, he slightly misunderstood what um, was written in the press release, and, uh, and which was a very different message, um, in which I'd actually said um, that these kind of arguments that smoking is a gateway drug um, uh, sorry, that, that the vaping is a gateway to smoking um, and that um, vaping will renormalize smoking um, were the kinds that will be mobilized in the absence of any hard evidence or any systematic and firm evidence um, for the health dangers of vaping. Um, but, but clearly he hadn't picked up on that message and what, what we actually got was, was something very different. And I think that problem was compounded when uh, by and here's a count. The, the story went to the newsroom and they kind of sexed up the headline <laughs> um, so that it, it, it was it was harder hitting. And before long, this was trending as the biggest uh, um, article on the website was being the most most viewed. <laughs> and I was getting quite a lot of abuse yes. uh, and from, you know, and quite understandably from people who thought, well, this is all um, nonsense. Well, um, let's 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 just put the record straight and and yeah. and let's get your views exactly one as i understand it you do not believe for one second that e-cigs are a gateway to hard drugs or anything else no absolutely not and i think the whole gateway argument really it ha hasn't been properly explored and, and it's one that's been picked up and uh, um i think abused to some extent I and mean, the, the very simplistic gateway argument as you'll probably be more than familiar um, is that young people in particular will be attracted to vaping and from there that will lead them on to either conventional smoking or it will then lead them on to other drugs and get them into a kind of mindset where using drugs is, is, is a good thing. And actually the evidence for that, um, even though there's been a, a few studies recently uh, um, which again, uh, they maybe point in the direction of there being a correlation um, between um, users of e-cigarettes and 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 and, and young and this in, in the kind of adolescent group um, and users of conventional cigarettes, um, but correlation doesn't equal causation. That's the classic line. It's not mine. Um, and you know it could equally be that people who have tried uh, young people who've tried uh, conventional cigarettes are more likely to try e-cigarettes. But so you know the actual. Uh, um, causality is is definitely not being established, and um, so yeah, I think it's anything but. I mean, but I think the, the kind of the bigger the bigger thing is that this this gate is imagined as swinging only one way, um, and and actually, you know, the welter of evidence suggests the gate swings another way, and that is from conventional tobacco towards vaping, seasoned smokers who have been smoking for a long time, um, turning to uh, to vaping. Um, as an alternative source of nicotine, and at that one, that's you know, I don't think there's anybody on the planet who's going to argue that they're they're more dangerous uh, uh, um, than e-cigarettes, despite the recent headlines from the Daily Mail. Oh well, actually, 
um, I'm going to say that there are people who are already arguing that they right. are more dangerous than tobacco right. cigarettes. Right. For the life of me, I can't understand why. Yeah. Um, I suspect it's got something to do with uh, this whole notion of third-hand smoke. Have you come across that one? Yeah. Mm. Um, which is, is completely ridiculous. Sarah's sitting there with a, a kind of inscrutable look on her face. What's, what's your thinking on all of this, Sarah? Oh, I can't wait for the third the third hand vapor arguments. I'm sure they're <laughs> going to come. But getting back to the uh, the article in the Mercury, um, I'd already read Jason's press release when uh, when that came out a few days ago, and I, when I read the Leicester Mercury piece, I just couldn't believe that Jason had said what they were saying he'd said. I mean, you know, one of the paragraphs were he said that vaping, a term used to refer to e-cigarette use, encouraged addiction, gave mixed messages about healthy alternatives and could lead to the use of drugs. And <laughs> I just thought, well, you know, there's got to be something wrong here, which is which is why I tweeted Jason and said, did you say this? Mm -hmm. Did you really say this? And of course, it was already all going off on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, had already, had already read it. Well, so I mean, I and, and yeah, I mean, it was actually, it was, it was, I was very grateful that I didn't have to kind of set the record straight. There were a lot of people straight away um, linking to the original press release mm. um, and saying this kind of bears no resemblance to uh, um, you know what he's been saying and what he was saying. There's also a SoundCloud link where I'd had a kind of uh, um, a, a, quite a long interview reduced to about a minute um, where I also talked about it. Um, so yeah, no, I was very grateful for that. And actually, that that pressure from the followers on Twitter um, caused the Mercury to kind of very quickly backtrack. Um, the reporter in question got in contact with me and said, um, you know, we want to fix this. Um, can can we have another go? And then, you know, we went through about three or four versions of the story. Um, and uh, eventually they've taken, I think, unprecedented or very unusual st step of reprinting the story, uh, um, it, both in physical print and, and online. Um, and with a kind of a bit of a redaction at the, bat at the bottom where they say, you know, an earlier version of this story said, oh, you, you've already, sorry, mm. you've already referred to that. Um, but yeah, so it's quite shocking. I mean, I, I've, I've done um, sort of media appearances before and interviews before, and I've done a few recently because of this press release. And you kind of always expect there to be a disparity between... Uh, uh, oh dear. It looks as though Jason's frozen again. It must be the rain down at his end. Mm. Yeah, the internet connection problems again um, at his end. But we'll, we'll keep on trying and bring him back. Yeah, there we go. Sav, while we're doing that, what's chat up to say? I've got a couple of things from chat. Um, I'm not sure who said this. I think it was Laurie who said it earlier on, saying, shame the reprinted article was on page 10 and not on page 3 where the original article was printed. Mm -hmm. Lipsy has said, a slightly missed the point. That's very kind. They got it completely wrong. Entropy72 saying, Vapeway is a gateway for politicalisation and disbelief in anything the public health has to say. Mm -hmm. Disco Des has said in capital letters, e-cigs are a gateway out of smoking. Mm -hmm. And Gillis has said, e-cigs are a very slippery slope away from tobacco. It's very difficult to go back. <laughs> Uh, that 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 is very true. Welcome back, Jason. I'll, we'll keep dialing it up as long as we need to. Yeah, this is back on the iPhone. I think I'm going to stick with this. It does seem to be. I'm, I'm not even going to talk about iOS versions, but I do know that if you've gone to iOS 7.1, it is having problems with networking. Okay. Yeah. It's uh, it. uh, that that could well be it. Um, yeah. I mean, on, on the uh, on the subject of um, of there being a reprint, it's very very rare that any editor would take that step. I've only ever seen it once in a 20 year career as an editor myself. Um, and that was, it was actually libelous, the first piece. And it was libelous. And I, I know because I wrote it. <laughs> um, that was before I'd had my libel training course. And uh, yes, it was reprinted after I'd rewritten it. Um, and that was on pain of going to court. But this, I've got to give kudos to the Mercury for actually doing the reprint. While while we were redialing you back up, um, Lorian 
had said that it's a shame that it was on page 10 rather than page 3. I, I've got to be honest and say I'm surprised, I really am surprised it came through at all. Um, and what many people probably don't know is I saw the various iterations of the piece as it evolved. And the, the one that's gone into print today and onto the website today is definitely the best of the lot. Um, it, it, it's, a, it's a queer experience though coming through that and it, I think it points to the kind of um, language we've got to use when we're dealing with the media and the press. Um, my, my training was always that you write for a reading age of 10 and you have a fair chance of them still not understanding and needing to get back in touch but I'm, I'm really pleased that they've done what they've done. But you, you've been very busy today as well, Jason, putting in a bid for some research. Uh, I'm sorry, you broke up there again. Can you repeat the question? I'm saying you've been busy today uh, preparing a bid for some research on e-cigs. Can you share yeah. any of that? Yeah, no, that's that's right. Um, well, I mean, I've long had an interest in smoking. I mean, I, uh, um, I, I published a book on it about 10 years ago. Um, and, I mean... Uh, one of the things that uh, I was kind of observing at that point was there's been this move towards more sanitized form of smoking. Um, and, and, and actually, if you look at the long term history of tobacco use, one of the prime drivers has been uh, these increasing social pressures on smokers. And, and that's, that's driven a lot of the changes in the, in the forms of tobacco that people smoke and in the way that they smoke them. And of course, when you as an absolutely perfect that fit my model perfectly. And so I've been thinking for a few years now of, of doing this, and it's in the last year, everything, the interest has absolutely exploded mm -hmm. with, uh, uh, with the new legislation, the TPD and everything else. That it's, The time is absolutely right. Um, I mean, one of the, the, the crucial things um, is one of the core debates is about whether, how we can classify these things. And e-cigarettes have really problematized that long-term classification, that distinction between um, the therapy and the drug. You know, the therapy being nicotine replacement therapies and the drug being combustible tobacco. And uh, prevention, previous forms of, of tobacco would, would enable you to make that distinction fairly firmly. But with e-cigarettes, the lines get completely blurred. Um, and it's that kind of ambiguity about them. Are they a keep smoking device? Are they a stop smoking device? I think that's that's fueled a lot of unease within the kind of clinical and the medical communities because it's very difficult for them to classify exactly what this is. Um, I mean, even if you think about it, that the whole idea of nicotine replacement is a strange idea. It, it, it involves this kind of tautology that um, we use nicotine to treat tobacco. Well, what about when tobacco has become essentially just nicotine? It's become reduced to nicotine and, it, and, and, and it's in this form. What's the, dis what's the difference then between the devices that we use to keep smoking and stop smoking? And that's something that's been at the heart, I think, of a lot of these policy wranglings amongst uh, a load of other things as well. But of course, it doesn't depend on how you classify these things or how you enshrine those classifications into policy. That's not the key thing. It depends on how vapors use them and how end users use them. Um, so there's lots of evidence of people long using patches, inhalators and whatever else not to stop smoking but to keep smoking um, uh, and and vice versa you know something what is it four in ten quit attempts in the UK are now made with electronic cigarettes is it as high as that yeah yeah I mean this was this was data from ash and there's an ash released a fact sheet at the end of uh, February and um, and that was where I read that particular study um, it wasn't ash who did the study but they they, they amalgamated two or three studies to reckon it was about four in ten quit attempts now use e-cigarettes. So, you know, the, 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 what we've really got to look at then, and for me, the, the interesting research question is how is the social uses, it's the cultural and social uses of these devices, and we need to understand a bit more about that. Um, we need to actually to speak to vapors. Um, I mean, I was chatting to you before, David, about how I got interested in this. I'm I'm an ex-smoker for what it's worth. I don't have any vested interest. I'm, I'm not a vapor. Um, I'm just interested in it. And, you know, I'm, I, I, my, whole, my whole interest is, you know, how did this come to be? How did we move from tobacco being something that you smoked in a combustible way to something uh, um, that, you know, it becomes it's, it's something that you, you consume through this very high-tech device? 
and, and, I, and, and, and with regard to electronic cigarettes, I was n pretty much neither for them nor the, uh, against them. Um, but um, I, I gave a, a paper again, another paper to a different part of the university oh, towards the end of last year. And one of the people who came along was Louise Ross, who I think you've had on your, sh your show before. Oh, yes, yes. And Louise, again, was, was very much like me. She was quite sort of ambiguous. She was ambivalent about whether e-cigarettes were... Uh, w w what, what kind of devices were they? Were they something to be feared from a tobacco control perspective? Were they something to be embraced? She wasn't sure. And I think she was erring on the side. As I think a lot in the medical and the clinical community and the health community do of, of caution and thinking well you know we, these are untested we need to treat them with suspicion but when you actually talk to vapors one of the good things uh, um, about uh, um, that meeting with Louise is that she organized a conference at the King Power Stadium the Leicester City football stadium and um, we had something like 200 uh, uh, people from the local community and beyond we had GPs there we had stop smoking practitioners come along and we also, but the most crucial thing of all for me was we had a panel of vapors um, coming along. And, um, and it was the, really the first opportunity, paradoxically, that I'd had to talk or to hear uh, um, and ask questions of, of vapors themselves. So, and I think this is part of the problem is that a lot of these decisions are made, a lot of these discussions are held without talking to vapors. And at the beginning of that session, um, I can't remember who it was who asked, who convened the session, who chaired the session. Everyone was asked to put uh, put their hands up if they were kind of generally on the balance of things in favour of e-cigarettes, or on general on the balance uh, uh, on the fence, or, 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 or opposed to them. And um, I, I was probably a bit on the fence at the beginning of that session, and then at the end of it, I was very, very much in favour of them. Especially ask, you know, when you see how they're being used, how they're being understood. Um, and uh, you know the the kind of just just the difference it, it has made to, to to a lot of people who just were never going to stop smoking. You know, there's just no way they were going to stop smoking. Um, and you know, they they talk about saving money, but they also talk about improvements in health. They also talk about their families, and this stuff actually matters. Um, and I, I and uh, the, the guy who convened this said he'd he'd ran a similar um, he'd ran a similar kind of uh, straw poll, you know, with a show of hands, and he'd never seen such a swing over the course of this day. So anyway, so that's my rambling answer, just to say that you know, my research really is going to focus on the social uses of e-cigarettes and, and, and really engage primarily with vapors themselves. Mm -hmm. Well, I, th I think, I think it's something that... I was going to say, I think it's safe to say that you'll probably get a fair few uh, volunteers from yeah. the viewers this evening, if nobody else. I'm seeing Sarah going, yes, count me in. I'm right, aren't I, Sarah? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. I, I think the more research into this side of things, the better, really, because, you know, one of the things we've always complained about is, is that they don't ask us. They don't ask the people that know. Yeah. You know, we, we end up with people legislating on our behalf about things which which affect us and they do not understand the first thing about us yeah because they don't yeah. talk to us yes it, 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 it is very true um i'm gonna have to take a quick blast of adverts when we come back we'll find out what chat's been saying about this because i've been watching sav's eyes and they're going like that I think there's a lot in chat, isn't there, Sav? Yes, chat have been very busy tonight. Right, you hope. Well, we'll take the adverts. We'll be back in two minutes and then we'll hear from chat. Don't go anywhere. This is going to be interesting.
Weber and iWeber Alexa. Best in Yorkshire for your AC needs. That's iWeber.co.uk and iWeber-Alexa.co.uk. iWeber and iWeber-Alexa.co.uk. Proud sponsors of WeberTrails.tv. And we're back in the room um, with Professor Jason Hughes of Leicester University, whose internet connection is acting up a little bit. Please bear with us on that one. And also Sarah Jakes, whose internet connection isn't acting up. <laughs> Having said that, it probably will now. Uh, let's go to Sav and see what Chats had to say. Right, I've got quite a bit from Chats, so I'll just rattle through it. Moonlit has said, I don't consider the question of whether it's a stop smoking, keep smoking, smoke less unhealthy device. Fact is, they are less harmful than cigarettes. That's all that matters. Robert said, I forgot who it was who said it, but e cig is a smoking sensation device. <laughs> I like that one. Yeah, Swifty McTavish says, it all boils down to money. That's all governments are interested in. They couldn't give a damn about our health. You don't see any news on kids, teenagers smoking real cigarettes around the back of the bike sheds at school because it's old news and they will keep buying them no matter what. They just use the think of the children as an excuse. Big Pharma and Big Tobacco lose out big time with e-cigs and they don't like it at all. They want What they want is their bonuses. Lorian has said... It makes perfect sense when you look at it in history. The act of nicotine consumption has been getting safer for a long time. Even cigarettes are far, far safer than they used to be. Egomaniac said, I actually saw a post on one of the forums where a smoker said, why bother with vaping since it's going to be outlawed anyway, I'll just stick to smoking. Yeah, that's a point. Yeah. Moonlet has said, you'd think the term harm reduction would sum it up in an unquestionable manner. It reduces the harm in consuming a given substance. Who could possibly argue with that concept? John Diver has said, he was one of those, there's just no way I was ever going to stop smoking people. Vapor Caper has said, this stuff actually matters. Damn right it does. Mm. And Whip It Up 69 has said, yeah, nothing about us without us. Which brings us to a question that Whip It Up has ha uh, asked. And he says, what is the problem with the media and press and e cigs? Why can't they just tell the truth? e cigs are a good story in their own right. It doesn't need lies. Well, I'll throw that across to Jason because he's well versed in this. Yeah. Um... Well, I mean, I, I've, I've just written about this tonight. Actually, I've got a blog post up because I mean, I was going to reflect upon my experiences of this kind of misquote and everything else. And, and one of the things that I was thinking about was, you know, uh, yeah, the whole experience was quite educational and, uh, you know, a little bit bruising as well. Um, I, I wasn't happy about being misquoted. But the thing that really concerned me was, was the kind of the power of headlines. Um, and, and that's what kind of really worried me about the whole thing. If you see a headline that says um, e-cigarettes are a, a gateway to hard drugs, what, what are the consequences of that kind of headline? I mean, that headline might have disappeared within, you know, a day or so or something like that. But um, the implications of it and, and the kind of um, the fallout from it, it lingers for a long time, just like its, it's radioactive counterpart. It stays uh, and it per permeates its way into the public imagination. And what worries me is that, is, is that, you know, you can imagine a parent who's got a child vaping thinking, you know, my God, that my child's going to be taking crack cocaine within a few months or something like that. Um, or you might have a, 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 um, a vapor, uh, sorry, a, a regular smoker who, who is, is put off switching to what would be a kind of massively safer source of nicotine because they think, well, you know, uh, e-cigarettes are something dangerous, and, and there are all these unintended consequences of these screaming headlines. And I'm not, sh I'm not absolutely not saying that the Leicester Mercury was trying to whip up a frenzy with its head headline, but um, you know, we do need to be, you know, we need to think and reflect a bit about what these what these headlines actually do. And you can imagine a young person thinking, well, you know, if e-cigarettes are that dangerous, if they're going to leave, well, why don't I try the real thing? Why don't I try a combustible cigarette if they're just as bad? Um, so, you know, these are, these are things to think about. Um, and I mean, I, I, what, what worries me, I, I think what's fueling a lot of these things, I don't think it's a big conspiracy. I mean, maybe I'm being naive, 
Um, I don't think this it, it, it's it, it is that. I mean, I think there are definitely powerful interests. The tobacco lobby is very powerful. Big Pharma is very powerful. But I think um, one of the big things here, obviously, is that e-cigarettes look like cigarettes, and they they're in the same category of object as conventional cigarettes. I don't think that does them any good. Um, and I think that part of the problem with that is it makes them, in the public imagination, particularly guilty by association. Mm. If they're like cigarettes, well, they must be bad. Surely they must be bad. Yeah, um, I, I would I, I would agree to the extent of when you're starting about looky lighties, but I don't know how much you can see of your screen. And I can guarantee you that there's nobody on the, on this team and probably nobody in chat and probably nobody that will be watching this show in video on demand that's using anything that looks like a cigarette. No, that's absolutely right. And I, and I think that's the thing, you know. The, 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 uh, um, I mean, again, one of the paradoxes of the Tobacco Products Directive is it's, it's going to all but outlaw the second generation devices um, and make it more likely that people will be using cigar lights rather than uh, um, uh, uh, the, the, the kind of second generation, the refillables and so on and so forth. Um, so, you know, yeah, I absolutely agree. And I think there's a distinction between the two. But we also need to think about you know the words that we use and everything else you know we do we do call still call them e-cigarettes and i think something as superficial of that makes them look ostensibly like the same kind of thing i totally agree they're not um but i think this is kind of fueling a lot of the public anxiety and if we can get across the message that these are actually a separate thing um in the sense that they don't contain smoke um they, they and that's the crucial thing in conventional cigarettes that it contains all the carcinogens um, I think that would make a big difference, and um, you know some of these very well-meaning campaigns uh, uh, um, to you know to regulate um, or to, to place restrictions on e-cigarettes. Well, we, we need to think about what are the unintended consequences of those as well. And you know, everything is about reducing risks, as you said, to the children and. and uh, yeah, sorry? We're, sorry, we're starting to break up again, Jason. Just a touch. Sure. Can you go through that bit again? Yeah, I was just saying, you know, that, that there's a lot of discussion of risks, and um, and it's almost as though we could live in a world without risks. Yeah, um, I, 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 that 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 is something that does keep on coming through, and that I hear from all kinds of academics that that there is the possibility of a risk-free world, and yeah. there's not. There just isn't. But just before we leave the thing about headlines, I'm going to throw this into chat. I'm sorry to do this to you, Sav, but I'm going to do this. And Sarah and Jason, please don't don't give the answer to this because I'm sure you'll remember. If I say to chat, Rockstar ate my hamster, who are they talking about? <laughs> It'll take a minute for that to come through, but yeah. that's the power of the headline. A well-crafted headline is remembered in perpetuity. Rockstar ate my hamster. Who was that? Who who was that about? And certainly the older members of uh, our viewership will remember that one. And that you, you're so right in what you say, Jason. We've really got to be careful. And to some degree, I suppose we need to be saying to journalists that are covering the kind of work that you do, the kind of work that Jerry does, and, and a lot of other people. Look, can we have sight of the piece before you go into print? Because it's got to be worded right. Otherwise, you're going to create unnecessary panic. Are they answering yet, Sav? Well, we've got Freddy Star at the hamster and Ozzy Osbourne at the bat. There you go. Yep. That, I, we need to say no more than that. That's the power of the headline, and it's something that we've got to be careful about. Sarah, what do you think about what you've been hearing so far? Because I've seen this inscrutable look going between smiles and it's all sorts. Well, you know, I, I agree with what um, what Jason's saying when it comes to, uh, if you like, a naive public that perhaps aren't aware um, of what, you know, our devices are and, you know, what they mean to us and, and the fact that obviously there's not the carcinogens and things like that. But I don't think there's any excuse for the people who are paid to understand these things to make the same mistakes. You know, they, those people should be able to make that differentiation. Um, there's no excuse for them to turn around and say, well, you know, they must be awful because they look like a cigarette. That's unforgivable. Yes. That, um, that brings me rather nicely on to something else that Jason's been involved in today. You've been a busy lad today, haven't you? Um, 
Where is it? Where is it? It's from Clive Bates's blog. Oh yeah. And um, there we go. It's up there. There's a guy called Stan Schattenstein, which is a most unfortunate name. I think it's the past tense of his real name, to be honest. Um, I'll let chat make their own mind up about that. And he's been, um, I'm going to say, getting at it with Clive Bates. Now, I'm not going to go through all of this uh, in, in too much detail, but he's been quite voluble on Clive Bates's blog. It's worthwhile having a look. Um, it's www.clivebates.com uh, and go to the piece that is entitled, where is it? You can see how much there is because I'm scrolling like a good in here. Um, it's his open letter to uh, Stan Glantz, the famous Stan Glantz. And I, I, can't, I can't mute our callers in just in case anybody decides to swear. I take it you've come across Stanton Glantz, have you, uh, Jason? Yes, I have. I've got... Uh, this is really irritating. I've got 3% left on my iPhone, so if I phase out, we're going to have to go again on the iPad. Okay. Um, sorry about this. Uh, it hasn't worked fantastically well with the iPad. I'm, I'm just rebooting it. Maybe that'll fix it. Yeah, I've heard of Stan Glantz, and, uh, um, you know, and I, was, I, I, I contributed to this exchange this afternoon. Um, he, he's uh, the, uh, um, the, this chap. Uh, what's his pseudonym again? Uh, it's Stan Schattenstein. Yeah, Stan has has responded, and I haven't yet had a chance to follow up. But the thing, in particular, that I took umbrage with um, was his depiction of um, vapors as juvenile and as engaging with, you know, engaging in a behaviour that was offensive um, and, and basically childish. Um, and he said that anybody who puts a tube into their mouth is is, is basically childish. Mm. Um, and I mean, what was interesting about that to me was it revealed a great deal about what underpins this kind of hunger to incriminate e-cigarettes. It's it's it, because there's no, as yet, there's no firm longitudinal clinical evidence to support this, uh, uh, um, to support the arguments against uh, uh, e-cigarettes. There's been a, a much more of a focus on what I've called the social dangers. And here's an exemplar of the social dangers. And he he compared using uh, e-cigarettes to spitting uh, um, and that you know we've left that behind he was suggesting and that we no longer see spittoons in public places in the US and that's because you don't really need them anymore people have kind of grown out of it so you know I, there's a lot of that, that which is pretty offensive uh, and which no doubt some of the people watching this will find offensive too um, but, but it's really interesting because it characterizes the kind of arguments that have long been associated uh, um, in, if you look at the history of tobacco, um, what are first social pressures and social arguments against smoking later become transposed into medical arguments, and this has characterised the history of smoking. Um, and and what what you can see in this case, what stands kind of the the, the, the thing that underpins a lot of his analyses is his abhorrence of, of, of any kind of activity such as smoking, which he sees as akin to putting a pacifier into your mouth. And I said to him, well. Would you be so bold as to make that argument um, against um, Native Americans who've been using uh, tobacco for millennia? Uh, um, you know, would you really want to turn around and call them puerile and childish and, and, and all the rest of it? Um, and, and I think it's revealing that what, what really underpins uh, a lot of his contempt is a kind of is a civilized code. He sees it as uncivilized. He sees it as kind of immoral to be engaging in these kind of activities. And, 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 you know, really, that, that, that needs to be very... And that's the thing that I'm most interested in. I've written about how these kind of attitudes, these kind of social pressures have long been very, very important in driving restrictions on smoking and driving changes in, 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 in how tobacco is used historically. Um, so, yeah, I, I, and, and so that's, that's been my response. I think he's come back with a few key points. And I think one of, his, one of the points he came back with was he was saying, no, 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 it's not... Uh, um, it wasn't so much the spitting; it was the spittoon uh, um, that he 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 found offensive. And if you extend that argument, you could say, well, then. Oh no! I think the battery's gone. Got frozen again. Yes, the, the, yeah. the battery just went there. I think you just got onto the spittoon, and if a spittoon is offensive, we've lost him again. I, I do apologise, Sav. Yeah. 
I'll run through. I've got a load of stuff that came in from chat over both of those topics, so I'll run through that. Um, Lorian has said regarding the, the newspaper articles, even if you do not look at the article, you still pick up the headline out of the corner of, corner of your eye. Alan Fletcher said the 20 milligram limit was due to misquoted research results. Mm hmm. Uh, Matt Didis has said a certain person today on, I think it was Twitter, was saying ASIG users should have to get permits. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Entropy said it's the loaded language that they use even on the most innocuous articles. Companies don't design products for women, they try and lure them. It all matters and it all affects public perception. Swifty McTavish has said, Now, what would be happening if Generation 1 had never came out and we started with Generation 2 and 3? I think everyone would be in a bit of a pickle right now. Um, if that could have happened. If that could have happened. Yeah, I've uh, got a question which I'll save for later. Oh, great comment. One of my favourite comments so far from Mitch Dog, who said, Risk-free society. Nah, no fun in that. Although, when a beer arrives, I'll be necking five pints a night and keeping my lovely flat tummy. I thought, yeah, I like that. Zero Vapes has said, There's a lot of sense being spoken by the professor here. Things said in interviews have to be very well planned out, just to be clear. Nelly Scroggett has said regarding Stan he said Stan reckons we are pathetic and juvenile good scientific argument that yes Mac Luggles has said it's a mixture of puritanism and realisation that their careers will be over after e cigs and Whip It Up has said well that's his problem not ours indeed um, I'm just going to pop something onto the screen while I've got chance um, we've, we've got Jason back in. You, you there all right, Jason? I am, yes. Yeah. Sorry Good. about that. No, it's okay. I'm just, just going to pop this on screen um, because I, I, I got stuck in. I had to. Um, and I said, Stan and Clive, let me first say that it is refreshing to see a debate opened up like this. Let me move on to offer Stan the opportunity to debate this live on web TV one Thursday night in the near future in the company of Clive, myself, my estimable colleague Sav, <laughs> and a fair few viewers who will also have the chance to chime in. Thus far, he hasn't come back to me, and I've made the offer twice now. So, Stan, Mr. Schattenstein, if you're watching, this is the kind of programme you'll come on. We're very serious. We don't take the water unnecessarily. Please come and talk to us in the company of Clive, my estimable comic colleague, Sav, and there might be one or two other people. Jason, would you come along for that? Sure. There you go. With a decent internet connection. <laughs> yeah, I think I'd stay at the university. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Sorry, Sav, I interrupted you there. How do you more? I've got one question, and it's from Whipped Up, and it says, uh, is Jason aware that the TPD is hoping to reduce smoking by 2% a year, but e-cigs have reduced smoking by 8% this year alone? I'll it's not really a question, it's more a statement, isn't it? Well, yeah, but it is a question. Are you aware? <laughs> I, I, yeah, I mean, I actually wasn't aware of that particular statistic. That's that's very interesting. I think, I mean, this is this is the, I mean, if you were going to go down the route of what we sociologists call medicalization, and I'm sure some of you have heard this term before, um, you know, you can see that what well, one of the problems with the cigarettes from uh, is that it hasn't come from a kind of uh, the medical community. It hasn't come from a. a, a, a a sort of a health campaign. It hasn't been a kind of government-sponsored initiative to reduce smoking. It's something that smokers have done themselves. Um, and we've got a counterpart in Sweden, which is uh, you uh, no doubt. I think you've discussed it before. I've seen it on here, uh, which is Snus. Yes. Um, and uh, there, they've got one of the lowest levels of uh, tobacco-related illness in Europe, as I understand it. Um, and that again, that's 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 not come f through. You know, the use of pushing nicotine replacement therapies. Um, I mean, I think you know, one of the points I was making when I, I kind of got cut off before, or what I wanted to make as well, was, you know, I do understand why people are circumspect about e-cigarettes, and it's kind of like the fear of, you know, and this is something uh, um, that has historically served human beings very well, you know, to be fearful of the, the new, to be kind of cautious and to, to wait and see. Um, but 
in the case of e-cigarettes, it, it, it presents a series of, uh, of, of problems. And, and we should be also, you know, we should also think about those. What are the problems of this kind of uh, wait and see approach? What are the problems of upfront caution? You know, if, if, what are the problems if we are stemming the tide of smokers who are switching to vaping? You know, has anybody really thought about that? Um, uh, what are the unintended consequences of, uh, uh, um, you know, all these kind of scares that are coming up at the moment? If it stops people uh, from switching to a safer source of nicotine, then, you know, lives are at stake. You know, tobacco related, not to be too dramatic, but if you are stopping potentially millions of smoking, Massively reducing their chances of contracting tobacco related illnesses. Yes. You know, surely we should be treading carefully around uh, around that rather than seeing that as caution. That carries certain risks as well. And so, this is the point I was making about a risk free world. There is no such thing as a risk free world, and risks always have to be balanced. And at the moment, the thing that seems to eclipse all others for me is, is this real problem of stemming this kind of unprecedented shift. Uh, uh, you know, if you look, if you take a very broad view of, of of smokers stopping, smokers stopping smoking and and switching to a different activity um, which mimics smoking, uh, um, and which doesn't carry anything like the same level of health risks, and that's uh, um, that's something we should be very careful about stopping. What about that gateway? We shouldn't block that. We shouldn't obstruct that. Or we should think twice about blocking or obstructing that gateway, albeit through very well meaning policies that want to, you know, regulate the quality of these devices and, 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 and stop them getting into the hands of teenagers. We also need to think carefully about those risks. Well, it, it's not just that, but there is also moves afoot, are also moves afoot, by NICE, would you believe this, and I'm, I'm going to show you this, this is the guidance that they've been putting out for um, pregnant ladies and people of, uh, of poor mental health and what have you. And this is one of their recommendations in their latest documentation that says, Recommendation 6, advise on and provide stop smoking pharmacotherapies. And when you scroll down a little bit, and I've highlighted this, they are going to encourage people who are already using an unlicensed nicotine containing product, such as unlicensed electronic cigarettes, to switch to a licensed product. Advise the person of local policies on indoor and outdoor use of unlicensed nicotine containing products. So not only are they going to close off the gateway of people switching, they're also going to try and get hold of people who are already in a vulnerable situation. And I, and I apologise to all the ladies, but they're seeing you as in a vulnerable situation, being pregnant with child, and not just slightly, or in, in a, a similar situation of, I believe they're calling it secondary care, and they're going to see you with an e-cig and say, oh, no, 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 you should not be using that. You need to be using what our farmer friends are profiting from. And I think that's heinous. Have you got a view on that, Sarah? Uh, yes. <laughs> I, I read the whole of that, that uh, document, and um, what struck me about it really was that this is nice issuing guidelines for recommendations to adults, basically. Um, you know, what they're talking about is, throughout that document, is staff and the people using this secondary care. And the whole document um, is trying to force people to, to stop smoking for a start, which, and I'm wondering why that is um, anything that NICE should be getting involved with in the first place. Um, but when it comes to that particular recommendation six, well, my views, I, th I think I've, I've stated before on um, the uh, Shampix and the other one, which name escapes me. You know, if they're going to turn people from e-cigarettes for which there is no evidence of harm, now I know they would say yet, to something like those which, which we know they harm people. I mean, I know four people who have tried those particular drugs. Two of them um, became suicidal. One suffered such bad depression that he lost his business, and the other one committed suicide three weeks ago. Christ. Uh, you know, I, I think the cases that have been reported of those sort of incidences to them is the tip of the iceberg, because I know for a fact that 
none of those, well, the, the three that are still alive, reported their experience back to their GPs be because of um, the stigma of depression and uh, suicidal feelings. Mm. So those three came off it and survived, you know, survived the experience, never reported that back to their GP. The fourth one sadly isn't with us anymore and I don't think the link has been made as far as I know. But, you know, to turn people from something that, that has no evidence of harm yet to something like that is just immoral to me. I, I, I think I, I, I agree with you absolutely 100%. I think that is abhorrent, heinous and just plain wrong. Do, do you have a view on that, Jason? Yeah, I do. I mean, I think organisations like NICE uh, and, and the MHRA have to... Uh, um, always go back to their kind of standard, standard modus operandi, which is they cannot recommend anything until it's been clinically trialled and, 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 and all the rest of it. And at that, you know, when they, when they look at the world, they see e-cigarettes as a kind of big wild west and, and, and lots of very different products and lots of uh, um, unknowns. Uh, um, they don't know uh, about the kind of uh, the consistency, the purity, the kind of adulterants and all the rest of it. And I, I think that's where it's coming from. Uh, if I was to be balanced about it, rather than sort of trying to bolster Big Pharma. Um, but again, you know, what I would say, I, I, I definitely agree uh, um, that sort of encouraging people away from e-cigarettes and, and on to, to Shampix and Zyban, I think is the other one. Mm. Yeah. You know, that, that uh, where, where we know, uh, uh, and I think that's a really good point, when we know there are kind of health risks, well, if, if, you're, if your aim uh, is harm reduction, and we know that there's kind of been a, 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 a kind of history of kind of mental health problems in relation to some of these other drugs. Then we need to we need to think very carefully about what is the the kind of least harmful strategy. Um, but you know that's their thing. They have they have to work on the basis of what's approved. Um, and and I think there is somewhere on the website that until they are approved, but or at the point at which they they uh, and they can become approved. Uh, um, you know they, they they can't recommend them, but when they do, they they probably will. But the um, the thing we also need to think about, and the big question here is, well, why is it in the case of these smokers they haven't already switched to nicotine replacement therapies or these others? You know, presumably it's not just because they didn't know about it. It's not that that smokers haven't heard of uh, patches or, or chewing gum or, or these drugs. In, in many cases, smokers have tried these things and have found them unsatisfying and have found them not um, suitable as alternatives to, to, to conventional smoking. And I think this is one of the problems with, and this has been said by others other than me, but this is one of the problems of the 20, mil, uh, uh, 20 milligrams per milliliter restriction, is uh, um, that, you know, um, if you have the higher concentration, the gap, the jump from a cigarette to an e-cigarette, e switching to a lower brand, a lower tar brand or something like that, you know, you could almost compare it to something like that. I mean, I don't know experientially, and you can probably tell me what the, what the gulf is between the two, but if you're, if you're able to control the kind of hit um, that you get from an e, uh, uh, particularly from a second generation e-cigarette, and make it roughly comparable or, or, or not such a, a million miles away from what you were getting from a cigarette, then that jump is not so big. It's not so big. But there, there is a reason that people haven't switched to some of these other devices. And, um, and, and this is, you know, so when, when you have probably well-meaning advice, again, that we should then encourage people on e-cigarettes, uh, um, that maybe the thinking there is that, well, that they're a kind of staging post. Uh, between combustible tobacco and nicotine replacement therapies. But again, that seems to contradict the gateway hypothesis, doesn't it? You know, uh, is the idea there that, that nicotine, uh, that e-cigarettes would be a gateway to nicotine replacement therapy? Oh, so. my God, I bloody well hope not, because that <laughs> stuff is shocking. This is, this is all going to be, of course, uh, food for thought in the research, and I've just been reminded by Sav... Uh, that we haven't taken the second adverts and we've got to do that we'll take those adverts and when we come back we'll hear from chat and w we might be going to overrun a little bit <laughs> i apologize we'll be back in two minutes
And we are back in the room right towards the end of the show, but chat has to have its say, Sav. Yeah, uh, Max and... I can't read that, I've wrote over it, sorry, but someone in chat said... <laughs> Regarding you inviting Stanton Glance onto the show, says, Dee Dee, don't hold your breath. Oh, uh, well, it wasn't Stanton Glance, it's Stan Shitten Shattenheit, or whatever ah, he's that's called. It. That's, it's him that I want on. I've, I've already invited Stanton Glance on numerous occasions, and basically he's holding up one finger because he can't count to two. That explains that one. Then. Yeah. Robert said it's so encouraging to hear this sort of thing from a non vapor Lipsy has said it's all common sense. We're not used to it. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Gluggles says caution is important. Academics should be cautious about advocating restrictions on e six. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not quite sure what this comment is in reference to, but it's from our very own Marco Van Basten who says that's ridiculous and pure bullocks. Right. I can't remember why though. I did have it written down, but I forgot. Phantom Diablo said, "Has anyone looked at the ingredients of Pharma NRT products and how many chemicals they contain?" Mac Luggles again has said, "NRT in pregnant women has been shown to be as effective as no NRT. In other words, useless." Mm -hmm. Leanna Lawless has said, "She met someone who quit with Champex, but they were close to suicide." Max Height has said. Max Height has said, so when Big Pharma, when a Big Pharma product does not work and we go back to smoking, can we then prosecute them for making us smoke again? John Not Matt says, if they took all the money that is being paid to all these idiots trying to stop us vaping and gave it to the tax man, there would be no problem. And Reptile Keeper has said, Champ X nearly killed me and my ex. I tried to drive us both off a bridge whilst on it. It wouldn't. It would not be uh, anything I would take. Keith's had it, and he reckons it doesn't work. Um, and he went back to the fags after Champix. I, I yeah, wouldn't. I would. I wouldn't touch it with somebody else's barge pole. Frankly, um, nope. I'm, I'm relatively good these days at, at weighing up the risks of various different things. And no, evidentially, there's way too much evidence against uh, both bup bupri or. Champix and Zyban, basically. So, right, let, let's kind of bring the uh, the show to a, a, a decent end here. And what are you going to be doing re e cigs after this, Jason? I mean, I do, I'm, I'm hoping that this week hasn't left a nasty taste in your mouth with the uh, the way the mercury went. So, what what's what's next on the agenda? Where are you going? What will you be doing? And do you need any help? Yeah, I'm going to stay away from the media. I think uh, <laughs> <laughs> as, as far as possible. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's it's really nice to ask. In particular, the last question: What am I going to be doing? Oh, this is something that's fascinated me for a long time, uh, um, and you know, it's the kind of thing that gets me excited as an academic is to understand, uh, um, you know, how this came to be. How how do we switch towards e-cigarettes, and you know, what what are the implications of that? And, and and a lot of those things are unknown. And I really would like to be engaged uh, and to coordinate a large-scale research project from the kind of social science side uh, um, of things to kind of balance these things out. And as I said, you know, I've, I've not got an axe to grind, but, um, I, you know, I'm concerned about people who do. 
um, and uh, and, I, yeah, and, I, and in particular, people who do this without really engaging firsthand with uh, uh, um, the views of vapors and the experiences of vapors and talking to vapors, because for me that was a kind of a, a really crucial moment, and, and and I think there's a tendency to kind of m remove them from the equation, which is bizarre when you think about it. So it, it's it's really um, in terms of the the the, the, the short term and the longer term. I'm going to be looking to secure funding to do some uh, some major research on this and uh, um, and joining up with others who are no doubt also interested in it. Great, that's that sounds fabulous. I mean, we've adopted the uh, "nothing about us without us" mantra, and as I say, I'm fairly sure I can guarantee any help you need from the vaping community. Um, before we we close it up, as per usual, chat gets the last. I'm sorry, my eyes are all over the place because I don't know which camera I'm looking at. Um, chat gets the last word. Sav? Well, I've got a couple of last words. I mean, chat want to say a huge thank you for coming on the show. Pete Dermondy said, please could Professor Jason contact my workplace, Swansea University, and educate their public health department. Many, many thanks. Mm -hmm. Nettie Scroggett says, Jason, please don't stay away from the media. We need more like you. And this from Kizzy, which I'm going to read out in full, it's quite long. Kizzy says, this is not just about the equipment used from my point of view. I am now over two weeks off cigarettes because of the advice, information and indirect support of the vaping community, such as VTTV, chat and forums, as none of the people I know vape, they only smoke. I have not given in to the tar as I feel it would be letting not only myself down, but you guys down too. Cigar legs do nothing for me, just as NRT products and Champex made me very ill. So to you guys and girls and the vendors who gave me choice, I thank you all so much. If vaping adds just a few days to my life to spend with my family, especially my grandchild, it would be all worthwhile. But the EU and pharma and tobacco money makers want to take that choice away. Will I go back to the fags if they take it away? Probably, but I hope not. Mm. And there you go. That's, that's heartfelt. That mm -hmm. is heartfelt. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to say this. I found tonight, again, to be uplifting. Um, I'm, I'm encouraged. Uh, I'm urged on to, to carry on fighting and educating as much as possible. And as, as, as has been demonstrated, we need to engage with the wider public. We need to be in a position, I think, as vapors and as the vaping community, where we can do what we did in actual fact. When we see something that's patently wrong and we know somebody's been misquoted, we need to be in there. Mm -hmm. um, I want to say a great big thank you to Professor Jason Hughes for coming and joining us tonight. Thanks very much, Jason, and I'm, I'm hoping you won't be a stranger to the channel. Um, I, I certainly want to hear more about what's going on with uh, with this major study that you're going to be undertaking, and I, I will pledge my help and support if it is needed. And I think I speak for most people watching the channel tonight. So thank you very much for joining us. Thank Sarah, you. thank you too for, for coming along, as you do so well. Um, Jason, can you put my name on the study, please? Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we like to hear. And I think you can probably put Savs and mine on as well. And, Absolutely. Right. And uh, there's probably a list of my long in chat as well, is there? Yeah, there's been a lot of people saying put their name down. There you go. So you'll not, you'll not be short of willing volunteers and recruits. That's, that's all good. Um, yeah. I hope... I hope everybody has enjoyed tonight's show and is able to take some heart from it. I hope you've been able to take some pointers from it and I hope you feel as encouraged as I do. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed, even with the internet problems that we've had uh, in Leicester, I've thoroughly enjoyed the show, I've thoroughly enjoyed your company and thank you so much for joining us, Jason. To all of you there, vape on, vape hard and do not let the bastards grind you down. Until we see you next time, and that'll probably be Sunday for me on Dave's Tackle Box, take care of one another, take heart, and don't forget we are winning the hearts and minds of more and more people every day. From all of us here at Vapor Trails, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time.